welcome back then folks to of course day three of special projects pack number five this time for doubtless one of the cars which for those who like these builds you are probably more interested in a pretty natural follow-up to the m3 touring car the dtm build that i did last time of course this time for the sierra rs 500 now as far as the tuning parts first of all because of course you can grab any number of liveries there are tons of different appropriate liveries for a group a machine i've gone for this particular one you can grab it in the description of course give the creator some love from me if you do get it then as far as the tuning parts though as you can see the numbers aren't too crazy 634 points 1035 kilos 370 horses that is according to a source which i found online with a number of different specs of these old group a machines so that's the one that i've gone for i'm sure you can find different numbers though on different websites so go with whatever you prefer so of course you want your stage one weight reduction for the club sport the high lift cams stage two weight of course the power restrictor and ballast they're always good to have and you will need them for this one the racing crank and the fully customized computer I would recommend having the medium RPM turbo, the fully customized diff, stage 3 weight, and the body rigidity you could go for, I've opted not to, so as I often say I'll leave that down to you. We've got the balance tuning, I have opted for anti-lag, especially on an older engine with the turbo, it does come in handy, but again it's down to personal preference. We've got the racing silencer, filter, manifold, pads, and of course discs. Go for whatever discs you want, be it slotted, drilled, ceramic, whatever the case may be. We've got racing clutch and flywheel, of course, race suspension and transmission, and racing hard tyres. For those who are unfamiliar with why, to briefly explain it, if you build a car that's good on hard tyres, it will be even better on softs or mediums. Whereas if you build a car that's good on softs, it may end up being awful the other way around if you have to downgrade to hards. As far as extreme, there's nothing fitted there. And for the ultimate section, you could go for the carbon prop shaft. You don't necessarily have to. I'll leave that down to you. It's not like it's going to completely redefine what the car can do anyway. So once you've got the, the livery that you want, or this particular one, if you go for that one, and once you've purchased your parts, the next step, of course, is to tune it. So we've got the hard tyres fitted. For the suspension, I've opted for 112mm on the front, 132 on the back. This is most definitely one of those cars which is highly responsive to lowering it too much. You can immediately tell that the car doesn't like that, and I think part of the reason why is probably that mid-mounted side exit exhaust. It depends how realistic they made the game, because it kind of does feel like you're bottoming out sometimes if it's too low. For the anti-roll, that's on three, perhaps a little bit lower than you might expect. In fact, many aspects of the build are a bit different because I found it to be a kind of a, a good car and a twitchy car at the same time. So I've gone for 20 on the compression for the dampers, 30 for the expansion, aka the rebound. We've got 3.15 on the springs, 3 degrees of camber. I've opted for toe in by 0.20 on the back, toe out 0.15 on the front. For the diff, 10, 10, and 40. So like I said, a bit different to what I usually might do. For the transmission, I've opted for 240 on the auto setting. So not exactly a top-end car, but I figure most people are probably going to use it on circuits where you're not really getting that much higher than, say, 140, even 150 miles an hour in most cases. As far as the ballast, you do want to fit 46 kilos if you are using the same numbers as a reference as I am of 1,035. I've opted to put that all the way to the back to bring us that little bit closer to a 50-50 split. You want to notch down to 99% on the ECU just to get us perfectly at 370 horses. We've got no front downforce on this particular one. I've set it to 150 on the back. As far as the anti-lag, that is on strong. I know different people have their own preferences, but be sure that if you do buy it, you do at least turn it on. <laughs> Otherwise, it's kind of pointless. And of course, here you can see all of the other stuff that we have gone for. But all that remains is, of course, jump out to the track and show you what it can do in practice. Now, as I said, this car is both definitely quick. It's a fantastic rival for that Beamer. And now that we have, I guess, the Group A spec Skyline in the game as well, more recently, I may have to do a build of some kind to make it a trio. But this one is a little bit twitchier, a little bit more, I don't know, Jackal and Hyde-ish, I guess you could say, than the Beamer. The Beamer can have a little bit of a slip slide, but it's a pretty easy car to use at that particular power level. For me, I find the Sierra to be perhaps a tad overrated by some players. I think it is very good, but I don't find it to be this all-conquering monster that people seem to put it on the pedestal of. With that being said, it definitely isn't slow. I particularly enjoy uh, using custom racing events and letting the AI drive cars like this and the M3, because 
as recently you'll have seen in one of my reviews, actually for that aforementioned Skyline, you can see that this and the M3 are kind of up there neck and neck, which is quite nice as a tuner to see that the AI at least gives my cars a similar level of respect, that they're close to each other on the track and on the grid. So if you do decide to use it, of course, I hope you have a ton of fun with it. If there are any changes, by all means, tweak it to your own personal preference. And of course, if you feel that there's a certain change which makes a good difference to the car, and this goes for any tune, of course, drop it down in the comments for others to try. And naturally, be sure to stick around for the rest of the week for more special projects out of these 10. And of course, for the other ones that I've already done yesterday and the day before. But that's it for this build. I'll see you next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.